Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thanks for stopping in and joining us here. Um, on this here channel we do a lot of outboard fun stuff and other boating related business. That's what we do. So, in my last two videos, um, I had an ugly duckling 15 Evinrude that had a bad lower unit on it. Or at least a whiny lower unit. So, what I got here is going to be the donor. This power head's no good. I can't remember what the issues were with it. Um, but it's in better shape uh, parts wise, aluminum wise. Um, but I remember it had power head issues. This, this power head, if I remember right, the exhaust port inside the power head. Yeah. The exhaust port had a hole eaten through it from salt corrosion. So this will make a good, fine donor for that other power head. But I'm going to have to pull this power head. While I'm in there, I'll be able to loosen the throttles up. It has those transom clamps. Both of them are there. They're probably pros, but that's easy to overcome. We'll overcome that. That's what we're going to overcome amongst other things. So, I say, let's quit jabbering and let's get to it. Before we get going on this victim ugly duckling, I almost forgot. I have to say a big thank you to Mr. D. Roberts, also known as Mr. Robert. At least I think I got it right. Hope I got it right. And also to Top Catch 34. Big thank you to both of you guys for donating to my PayPal. It really is a humbling experience, and I want to thank you. Um, and I guarantee you, um, every penny will go right back into this channel. You understand. So, glad I didn't forget that. So, and then, there's been a couple people say, when's a fishing trip coming? You ain't done no, no halibuts fishing or fishing. I don't know if you can tell behind me, but the rain moved in. And uh, it's been this way all summer. My boat. My Bay Runners gift has been hooked to my Danger Ranger for the last four days. Just trying to find like a two hour window to run out there and get me some fresh vittles. Because I'm really, really. You know, halibut, is that a flounder? Does that count? I guess a, it could be a big old flounder, but uh, one of my favorite fish that we get out back here is rec sole northern rock sole flounders i call them um boy they're good and uh i haven't put any of those up yet this summer for the winter and i got to have my stuffed crab stuffed flounder for the winter you understand so um yeah i have had the old bay runner hooked up to the old Danger Ranger. You can see he even went and got a fresh six gallons of gas. It's been raining so hard I had to put a cast iron skillet over the over the fill part because I didn't want it to leak. 
get water in my brand new gas. But you can see I got my, well, maybe you can't see. I got my hip boots for launching right there. I've got the old skiff hooked up. And, uh, but it has just, whoops, wrong way. It has just been relentless in the rain and wind. It's finally starting to calm down. So hopefully maybe next day or so I might be able to get run out and get some fishing in. We'll see. Okay, I took three three-eighths inch bolts on this side beneath the power head and three on the other side. Then you've got three seven sixteenths inch pan, lower cow pan, with the vibration rubber mount there to take off. And uh, that's pretty much all that was hooked up on this one. Um, I'll need to cut that fuel hose, but for these low profile OMC motors, I find the best place to try and pop this power head loose from the base is right up under here. You can see this is the tiller side of the motor. Right here, there's that rubber deal. You can get in right there and generally take a screwdriver and a hammer and tap that gently. And that's where I find is usually the best place to get them started. Cut in there. And when they're old and salty like this guy, it can be a booger. There she goes. <sighs> yep, I'm already getting some separation in there. One of these, and then I'm going to come around to the back of the power head. Wherever I can, get some leverage. There we go, got some more. I got a little mower. There's some more. Now the screwdriver's pretty much all the way in there. So we get a bigger screwdriver. What's holding it now is the shift link. Just got to take that off. But essentially the power head's ready to pop out of there. There's a little shifter link in here. It's got a cotter pin in it. So we got to get that off. Or you can take out the bolt. Okay. I zipped that bolt out of there. I got a hose I gotta cut. Holding on. Um, I don't think so. But I can't be sure of that. She's wanting to come. I'm beginning to think the uh, drive shaft is stuck in the power head. 
and that does happen once in a while. Yeah, something stuck. Something stuck somewhere. Of course, that's how it always is. Power head's just flopping around. So imagine we're going to have to Let's see if I can get if I can get some good leverage. I might be able to stick it, but I don't know that. Hey. Bye, Joe, I've got it. She be nasty. Yep, throttles. Oh, stuck. So that'll have to come apart. Still trying to get this shift link Carter key out of here. We got it. So, now what we get to do. Is see what else? There's a washer, there's another washer, another washer. So get all those. And now it's blast it with the water hose time. That's what time it is. At least get the initial yuck off of there. Come out, creepy crawlies! I command thee, come out of there! They're in there. Alright. This donor unit here is a 19 and 76. 19 and 76 in the year of our Lord. Jump. Now we're putting a, an Evan Root. 19 and 81 power head in here. So. I always thought, yes, I'm wrong. I always thought these green ones, this is green, this paint. Wasn't that Johnson? Because this serial number starts with an E, which I thought it would indicate Evan. I always thought these green ones were Johnson's. Let me know. 
because I don't remember what Cali was on here. But she cleaned up pretty good, so I'm just gonna let it dry for a bit and then get it on a stand and look it over one more time. Okay, here's your here's your hack. You see this Phillips screw here? All this is, is just froze. All this rod going through and they typically break them right at that screw. Now the rubber cover has already been taken off this. Um, I have videos showing me how to get them off. It, there's some slots right here that you have to cut with a knife in order to get that rubber cover off. And then you can just use contact cement, paint it up and put it back on when all this is done. But that screw is a Phillips screw, and on these salty ones, you're not going to get that out with a screwdriver. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. That's just a piece of copper plumbing, copper tube that you would put in your house or whatever on your sink. I'm gonna heat the end of it with my torch. She's good and hot. Shave away a little bit on the side here. Okay. Try that on the same opposite now. There we go. Now, like I said, you ain't getting this out with a... Uh, Phillips screwdriver but I showed you this tool before van pliers and they got them teeth I got teeth right at the end now we've opened this up enough that I can get my hopefully we have we might have to do some more but I think I'm going to get it there we go these, these can get that now. She's turning. And now she's coming out. These van pliers are uh, the ticket for this kind of stuff. And you go, but you boogered up the uh, plastic handle. That is how I get that out. When we go back up with this, we will put a washer there, and you will not even know. I dropped the spring somewhere. It's down there. Um, but these teeth on these van pliers, they will get hold of that screw head, and and you can you can really torque on them with that. And like I said, this looks ugly, but we're going to put a washer, a stainless washer there. 
when we go back up with it and then I'll put some contact cement, put the cover back on and you'll never know what, what we did there with our little piece of copper tube. So that's your hack on how to get that out of there. Now look at this old Craftsman. The guy brought it to me. He said that it used to run. He couldn't get it to run. Well, it will run. Look at the blade on that thing. Is that nasty? Or what? Is that a nasty looking little... Nasty! Yeah. But... This is how he brought the thing to me. I'm going to show you. And it's going to be noisy. Nasty. Nasty. Did it seem a bit on the audible side? Did it seem a little loud and noisy? This is how I got it, folks. What do you think went right? Uh, uh, what do you think went right, you know, here? I don't know if he was running it this way, but it ain't got no muffler. Hey, butters, you need a mufflers. But I don't know if you could see it or not. But in there, the pistionis is somewhat on the scored side. <laughs> now, can you see all that scoring on the piston there? I don't know if it'll pick it up, but you can see the carbon, pieces of carbon right here at the exhaust port. So I don't know, was the damage done because he was running it without any mufflers? I don't know, but it's, it's all scored up. So it will run, but it's never going to run right and uh, without a rebuild, so... I'm going to call him, and, and but you can clearly see scoring there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's all scored up on that exhaust side. So, but that's the way he brought it to me, and I just used some intake carb cleaner and everything to clean it up. And, uh, and then I saw the scoring. Then I squirted some tri to help give it a little better compression. So you understand as I speak it in Spanish. And, uh, but now, let's take a, another reel. I, I know this is not an outboard. Could be. Never, never say never. But I want to show you something. What do you think that is? That there. What do, what do you think that is? I know what that is. But apparently, that is holding the power head part on. The duct tape and the... Uh, what do they call that? Ice skate. Ice skating blade. You know, you got the roller skate. You got the ice skate. That's an ice skate blade. You remember Castaway, Tom Hanks? He used 
the ice skate blade for chopping the coconut. Ice skate blade. Duct tape. No mufflers. No mufflers. You never know what's going to come in to this little shop. Never. Buddy. Packing it in for the winter. All right, what I did was I took my drill, I drilled a hole right here, and I drilled a hole right on the inside, right there. Okay, then I took my lube, and I spray in those holes. And let it soak for a little bit. That's what I did. You can see the see the stuff coming out down here. So you know it's getting in. And I let that sit for a little bit. And now, watch this knuckle right here. Everything's good and loose. Everything's good loosey goosey. It's all goosey. You can see the inside there. Everything's nice and free. And we didn't break our little screw off and stuff. And we can now confidently put it back together. But we got a ways to go yet. Okay, this is the time when, while you've got this power head off and you've got this whole thing, you know, you got access to everything. Um, this hood latch is completely froze. I can't budge it. If you put a pair of vice grips on there and try and force it, you'll break it. Almost guaranteed. So what I do with these, I get a torch. And I heat it where it goes in. There's a nylon bushing in there. You don't want to heat it to the point that the bushing starts melting and dripping out. So what I do is I heat it like that, then I take cold water and shock it. And a lot of times that's all it takes. And if it don't, there we go, we got movement. Okay. And uh, you would think, well, you could just loosen this nut. Uh, no, that won't do it either. The nut will just back right out, and the thing will still be stuck. So I'm going to loosen it now, and I'm going to heat it one more time a little bit. There is an oiler hole there. Like I said, you don't want to heat it to where it's melting. There she goes. Now I'm going to put some lube on it. What do I do with my lube?
this Krylon camouflage fusion. It actually matches the 76 paint very well. The problem is it's going to be flat when it, this dries. Then I'll apply a couple coats of clear. Um, and I found this is the cheapest way to go, this Krylon on these. Um, like I said, the, the bottom portion of the leg I have not touched. You can see the scratches here and everything. But you can look at the pan and see how close that is. It gets really close. So, but as you can see, the handle here, the shift handle is already starting to dry. And it's taking on that flat look. Well, as soon as most of it takes on that flat look, I'll hit it with the clear. Okay, hopefully you can tell in the camera the uh, area I painted, the pan and the tiller arm. They're dry and they're, it's looking pretty flat. So we'll take this. Clear glaze, triple thick crystal. And we'll shine that up now. get a nice gloss look going to it. Well, hopefully you can see there with a little bit of light shining. After a couple coats of clear, she's nice and shiny. And uh, looks a lot better than it did, of course. And I haven't done the lower part yet because I haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to turn this into a short shaft. So I got to think about it. Well, now I'm going to have to let that paint do a little drying before I uh, can get the other power head stabbed in there. And I'm going to have to do some cleaning on that other power head. Maybe a little painting and elbow greasing on that one too. Um, so I'm going to let that uh, paint set up and so forth and this one's probably getting a little bit long anyway so we'll call that a wrap on this one and as always you never ever, ever know what's going to come in this little shop and that truly is one more hat from Cody thanks for watching Stay tuned for part four on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.